So our next speaker, Daniel Tobin, is coming on to talk about a cloud-sourced guide to multi-cloud data security. I remember reading this abstract and I was very excited when I read it because it, lately, you know, in the last 12 months or so, we've heard a lot of maybe negative news related to supply chain attacks and with open source, the security of open source in general, which is not incorrect, uh, but there's also a lot of positive security that can come out of open source as well. So I'm really excited to, to see uh, Daniel go through some of these open source solutions that you can use to start your cloud security and, and multi-cloud journey. So with that, Daniel, I'll go ahead and let you take it away. Hello. Uh, hi. Cloud, loud and clear. Thank you. Hi. Welcome to Wisdom of Clouds, a cloud source guide to data security. Uh, we have a lot to get through, so I will be sharing the slides uh, after. Um, yeah, so if I'm, I'm speaking too fast, uh, I will be sharing all these slides, slides after. Um, my name is Daniel Tobin, and I'm currently the security lead for Cyril, uh, a startup building a platform for monitoring and securing uh, the data cloud. I've been working in DevSecOps since before the word existed, including as a paranoid sysadmin for a while at Yahoo. Approximately a decade ago, I spoke in person at B-Sides SF in an IMAX theater about breaking down silos and bringing QA into the fold with security testing. You can follow me on Twitter, and every Tuesday I post a wrap-up of the previous week's security news, all memes and facts, and shout-outs to tools like the ones I will be mentioning here. So in this talk, we'll talk about some of the sources I pulled from this information, uh, quick why this matters, a sprint through, a bunch of different open source projects that you can start implementing, talk briefly about our own open source project we debuted, and finally, questions if there's times. Otherwise, please reach out on Slack. So where are these cloud sources? Um, we've been, I've cloud sourced these from awesome, um, all these different awesome resources, uh, such as Clint Glibler's weekly TLDR sec, covering everything from red team, blue team, app sec, web security, and more. Marco Lencini's cloud security reading list, AKA cloud sec list is another awesome weekly wrap up of the latest in cloud news. Uh, from new tools to a rundown of announcements directly from the cloud providers. Duck Bill Group, aka Last Week in AWS, debuted mean, Meanwhile in Security for those trying to learn security uh, from more of a dev perspective. Uh, high Five from SecureB has a slight focus on offensive security, but still a ton of like really interesting stuff if you are in the defense space. Finally, Twitter is awesome if you can avoid some of the extras of it. So what are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about the, the data. Data breach notifications or news stories seem to happen almost daily at this point. So I turned the show in to get an idea about what they can see with regards to open data stores. Uh, if you're not aware of Shodan, they have servers located around the, the world that crawl the inter internet 24-7 uh, to provide the latest intelligence. And you can search all this data easily at shodan.io or via API. This article here was posted in 2015 and looked at the prevalence of MongoDB at the time, which was one of the key drivers uh, for exposed data. So how have we been doing since? Well, uh, it turns out last year, uh, a helpful person or group decided to do something about some of these open database instances. These helpful people found open databases like Elasticsearch and MongoDB and started deleting all of the data, leaving a call sign behind of meow in the indices. At the height, Shodan was showing approximately 15,000 instances that have been hit and were still open, with 11,000 being Elasticsearch and the rest being MongoDB. If you look into the previous article, the reason that MongoDB started dropping from the list was that they implemented secure defaults after two, four, um, and turned off listening on 000 by default. What's interesting though, is that what they've seen is that even though we think of MongoDB and Elasticsearch, 
Uh, what they're showing is that HDFS is actually the largest amount of, of data by size being exposed. Um, as you can see, this was from, from 2020, um, and they are showing that as of 2020, HDFS had 13.1 petabytes. Yes, petabytes. Uh, that's up from five petabytes in, in 2018. Elastic is nearly to 2018 HDFS levels in 2020, though, at 3.2 petabytes. Um, but those numbers may be down after the, the meow. Finally, we can't forget about, about S3. Um, as the previous speaker mentioned, uh, S3 is constantly in the, in the news. Um, so I turned to Gray Hat Warfare to look for those numbers. Gray Hat Warfare is an S3 specific service for searching and listening, listing open buckets. We of course know that a portion of these buckets should be open, but from repeated breaches, we can also surmise that a good portion of these should not. As you can see in 2018, they had approximately 50,000 listed buckets open. And today they have nearly 300,000 listed. Clearly AWS is doing a good job of gaining new customers. So speaking of AWS, so how do I actually secure this? So let's ask uh, Quinny Pig, uh, Corey Quinn from Duckbill Group. Mm, never mind, this is all too complicated. So how complicated is it? Well, let's look at the entire offering from uh, AWS. This is from Scott Piper, uh, formerly of a uh, consulting firm called Summit Route. Um, and it shows the count of APIs by AWS service grouped by the categories in the web console. Um, I'm not even sure what I know what whole categories of these services are, let alone how to even to start to secure them. If you are running in, in infrastructure in AWS, um, definitely talk to um, Duckville Group and Corey Quinn, uh, they have a bunch of great information there to help you secure um, and keep your cloud bill down. Uh, last week offers a newsletter and, and multiple podcasts. Uh, Scott ended up uh, going in-house um, and is doing a great job running in-house security, uh, but he did uh, post uh, his 2021 AWS security maturity roadmap uh, in January of this year. Uh, so if you are responsible for, for maintaining AWS, uh, go check that out. Um, it has great steps on where to get started um, in multiple different uh, tiers. So how do we scale our defense um, with the speed of development today, especially with overworked and understaffed security teams? The only way to, to manage data security at scale is to scale with security as code model. Security as code follows the development life cycle from dream to deployment, building an automated security checks that can be fixed directly by developers and service owners. Clear security controls and power ownership and increase the overall security of your organization. If you're new to this model, I suggest starting with soft gates and defining what should be a hard gate or a block until all can be diverted as needed. The goal is to promote teamwork and remove security teams from being blockers. So as we start thinking about this, this model, um, sensitive data is everywhere. Uh, and if you use Slack, it's probably there as well. Uh, Paper Mountain has really Slack Watchmen to scan your Slack instances for all sorts of sensitive information from AWS and GCP keys to passwords to certs and, and more. Code secure, security as security is code quickly with static analysis from SumGrep. SumGrep is an open source tool and it's powered by the community with a thousand plus rules working across 17 languages. The code cov supply chain attacked up the standard secrets risk, but secret check-in is still a legitimate risk. So what can we do? Luckily, there are a number of different tools. Uh, one of the GitHub was released by security researcher after using it for finding secrets in GitHub and receiving over $7,500 in bounties. 
GitHub is in the process of building out their own tool. AWS for Labs released their own secret finder a few years ago. Uh, OWASP has sedated and building on Slack Watchman, Paper Mountain has both a GitHub and GitLab Watchman. So if you're not using GitHub, uh, you can use that too. Oh, and what should I do if I leak, leak secrets? Uh, keep this post from Git Guardian in your back pocket or better yet, take it and add it to your internal playbooks in case you ever leak secrets. Infrastructure as cold tools have exploded in the past year or so from contact, comp test to kicks to check off and more. Uh, the CEO and founder of Adeni, Yoni Leidersdorf, um, has actually just released a uh, comparison on GitHub comparing a number of these uh, tools, inclu including Chekhov and Denny, Kix, Nick, Terrascan, and T TFSec with a number of test cases. Um, this is all on, on GitHub, so you can see the test cases that are there. You can contribute your own. Um, as you go through this, um, even though it is from a vendor, uh, they are trying to push general uh, infrastructure as code security. Uh, so you can see all the pros and cons there. Uh, we talked about uh, Shodan. Uh, you can actually sign up for a, an account with Shodan to and use their, their monitor options. Depending on your size, you may be able to get started today with at least a portion of your network with their free version after you register an account. So we did talk about S3 and the controls in place for S3 now are much better and easier to use. Uh, you can block public access at the organization or account level. You can get alerts from a trusted advisor for public endpoints. Uh, what if you want to monitor for exfiltration with actual credentials though? One of the known TTPs from the MITRE attack framework is for attackers to exfiltrate the same service on a cloud account they control. Darkbit has put together a blog post on how, the, how to monitor this and alert for these exact type of events. I really like this post as this really opens up the possibilities for all sorts of monitoring and alerting just by slightly modifying the parameters. If you can build alerts that should never fail, you'll know they're high priority if they do. Bucket Parade is designed as a total S3 security solution from inventory to secrets to, to secret scanning and more. One of the things that sets this apart is that it also includes policy templates for maintaining clear bucket ownership, enforcing public access blocks and getting exemptions. It extends the policies with email templates for leadership and user communication to ensure that the policies and processes are well understood prior to your company's implementation. If you see this picture and are currently asking why you're in it, Ashish Kurmi recently open sourced S3 insights to scan metadata at scale across all of your buckets and accounts. Ashish found that most solutions out there would fail, fall back to random sampling, which necessarily misses a ton of information for large data sets. S3 insights focuses only on metadata to be able to scale. Uh, he's currently looking for collaborators, so check it out on GitHub. Finally, Check out the awesome S3 security list from MXM0Z on GitHub for finding, scraping, and managing data in open S3 buckets. From there, we jump to overall cloud auditing, auditing with a tool from NCC Group called Scout Suite. Uh, if you were in the, concerned in the past year about TikTok as, assets and are looking to secure it either in Alibaba or maybe Oracle or who knows, uh, Scout Suite uh, now has some support for those as well as the big three, AWS, Azure, and GCP. Full re reports are generated with discrete action items. Uh, Smog Cloud from Bishop Fox was announced last year at Black Hat and helps you in inventory the cloud that no one wants. Knowing that what you have in a dynamic cloud environment has to be the first step to be able to, to protect it. You may think you have an idea, but if you're dynamically, actually dynamically scaling, you may think you own things that you don't and don't own things that you, you do. 
If you're only running GCP, uh, check out Forsetti, originally an open source project from Spotify. Forsetti allows you to scan, monitor, and alert on your entire platform. You can use the built-in rules, and you can even start writing your own rules. When we began with first, first, when we began with Forsetti, we were floored by the thoroughness of the potential configuration options. For the most part, there are sensible def defaults, but we, we wanted to share what we learned about running Forsetti for a smaller deployment. So I wrote, wrote about it last year on our blog, uh, which you can see there. Kates is everywhere and security is getting better, but if you're running Kubernetes, check out all these awesome tools. Darkbit uh, has MKIT for any type of de deployment, uh, whether it's AKS, EKS, GKE, or if you're just running Kates by itself. Sysdig put out a post on GitHub action-based config review. InfraCloud has a post on pod security policy with Open Policy Agent, aka OPA, OPA. And GCP has their own GKE auditor uh, that they released on GitHub as well. Sometimes APIs can return sensitive data for, for entry points. Sensitive data could be user information, data from business logic, internal IPs, and more. Uh, use Check out OWASP's API check, uh, which analyzes request response content and headers and tries to find sensitive data in both the request and the response. WWTech built an internal AppSec platform using some of the um, using a number of different AWS tools, uh, dis discover public web apps assets, perform port scanning, fingerprinting, and other useful reconnaissance, and launches light security scanning to identify potential risks, all built upon free open source tools and low-cost AWS services. Uh, um, I want to highlight a mass and subfinder, um, which are awesome tools to help you get a control of what you have out there in in AWS, um, etc. Um, these will you may be surprised what you what you have out there. Um, I really like this post as an overlay of a way to build a full program using mostly open source tools. Um, a, um, yeah, and I really love a mass and subfinder. If you've never run these before, you may be shocked at the amount of public information out there, especially since the advent of certificate transparency logs. Uh, if the last examples seem too simplistic and you have resources already, take a look at the this write-up from Uber on their cloud agnostic continuous monitoring service called Cloud Monitoring. Come on, come on, use this hammer, an open source project by Dow Jones composed of a collection of Lambda functions written in Python. These Lambdas act as a configuration violation checkers across AWS accounts and aggregate all the findings in easy to manage set of Dynamo, Dynamo DB tables in a centralized account. Come on then calculates vulnerability ratings, runs it through a number of deduplication steps and Uber tools to create more manageable tickets for service ownership teams to resolve directly. I think this is really a, a top-notch post of like where security engineering can go, like putting together all these these tools um, and being able to scale at the um, the size of of Uber. Uh, finally, I want to talk about a project that we released uh, that Cyril has released called Aprosium. Uh, we release this to help developers and more improve the observability and security of their applications. It allows applications to connect to databases without requiring access to credentials and emits logs, metrics, and traces with inf enriched information about their runtime execution context. It's built as a lightweight open source library with multi-language and multi-cloud support. Prosium comprises of two components that are deployed independently, an SDK that runs as part of the application code, and a standalone service called the Authenticator with which the SDK interacts on behalf of the application. A single Authenticator instance can support multiple applications, which may be set up optionally as an auto-scaling group for load balancing purposes. 
The SDK has the ability to query infrastructure metadata services native to various cloud platforms and to or orchestration frameworks such as Kubernetes to generate rich execution time context about the application. Uh, we currently support Postgres, MySQL, AWS, RDS, um, Identity, uh, Vault, Secret Manager, and more. You can learn more about it at prosium.com. Uh, you can get started with it at github.com on our GitHub. Uh, I also want to highlight uh, the OtoOS database security cheat sheets and, in general, all of their uh, cheat sheets. Uh, these are written for devs and give a great primer on what to do in general. Uh, best, I liked, I really liked using these as uh, circulating, using as teaching tools, uh, posting these in Slack, um, and really starting to work with developers. Uh, we've talked about a ton about third-party tools, but I also want to highlight that each of these products also has a very good documentation now, whether you're running Couch, Elastic, Kibana, Mongo, MySQL, Redis, or S3. Uh, we've really come a long way in the past uh, five or six years about getting to secure defaults with a lot of these, um, with security now being built in. Um, finally, um, just want to. Uh, we've run through this quite quickly. Um, I know I, I sprinted through this. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me um, on Twitter, dant 24 uh, We're also hiring. Um, uh, you check that out at sirecom careers um, I'll be around for Slack and and here to answer any questions that you you might have. Excellent. Thanks, Daniel. That was a tremendous amount of information and tooling uh, in that slide deck. So I know a lot of the folks are really excited that they're published just so they can go in and play with some of those and get that nice collection that you walked through. We've got a couple of minutes here. One of the Q and A's that came in uh, was about, uh, and this is your tool, uh, a Prosium uh, asking about, you know, connecting to the environment and what sort of credentials are needed in order for that tool to run, can you shed some light on kind of how you wire up the identity for that service and, and what all goes into that? Um, yeah, so what what happens instead of using passwords uh, directly, uh, the SDK um, reaches out for uh, a token um, from the authenticator service. Um, so you don't need the credentials directly on the database service, it contacts a the authenticator service which then connects to your uh your uh, secrets provider such as vault excellent so hopefully that helps um i'm more curious just than anything when you were doing some of your shodan searches and kind of looking into secrets management um, did you all run into anything surprising out there from a vulnerability perspective that you had to disclose to other folks um no no, we didn't really get in, did into that too much. Um, just looking, tried to look more like at metadata, um, seeing like where um, where everything was. Um, and really, this is a worldwide problem. Um, there's a ton of stuff in the U.S., but there's also just it. It's it's everywhere. I mean, everyone's connected um, at this point, and everyone is leaving leaving stuff open. Excellent. I think that covers all the different questions. Let's see, there's one more in Slack since we've got a minute. Uh, Vern asks, so just maybe general or high level recommendations. I know you shared the security guides for them, but is there anything specific uh, that you would mention about protecting Mongo or MySQL, given the kind of some of the ransomware attacks and things like that that have been uh, in the news lately? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it, the first thing it has to start with is is proper inventory management, um, especially in 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 cloud security. Um, 
unless you are an incredibly small shop um, that doesn't use dynamic scaling, like I've seen it over and over again that even if you think you you own stuff, you might not own it. Um, just the 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 interconnections, like they they sometimes break, like tearing stuff down, um, building stuff like back up. Um, maybe there is a a temporary outage in in AWS, um, and you don't have proper re retry. Um, you think everything like was torn down. Um, but you actually now are pointing a, a Route 53 address at an EC2 instance that you no longer own. Um, and I think just having that constant scanning um, and an inventory of not only the things that you know you own, but using tools like Amass, um, like Subfinder, um, running scans like publicly, whether that's using a tool like Shodan or running it from a third party um, cloud account. Like maybe you want to scan your AWS stuff from GCP and your GCP stuff from AWS. Um, I know we all talk about zero trust. So if you are running zero trust like that, that is great. Um, and everything is public. Um, so it's even more like to get to that, like we need to make sure that we know what we have uh, constantly, especially if you are in a dynamic like scanning environment. Um, we scale up, we scale down, and we just need to make sure that you are, you have the inventory that you, you know you have. Um, and I think we see that like over and over. It's just, there's too much out there, um, especially a multi-cloud um, or even trying to do the like multi-account that the previous speaker mentioned in, in AWS. Um, if you're running an account per developer to, to have that sort of separation, the blast radius uh, does reduce, um, but that visibility, you may not have that visibility. So I think it really comes down to like inventory and knowing what is actually out there. Right, yeah, that's a great point as you kind of talk about that architecture is, you know, we limit our blast radius by breaking these things up into accounts or projects and resource groups but yeah it does become a lot more difficult to keep track of all the things when they're kind of isolated in those namespaces so that's that's a great point as well so i think that wraps up the q a uh, if i missed anything feel free to jump over into the hallway slack channel for daniel uh feel free to drop some questions in there you're getting tons of feedback on how awesome that list of tools was and how excited people are to play with them so a lot of good stuff going on over there